let's take a look here at an overhead allocation example. So FedCorp allocates manufacturing overhead based on direct labor hours. Total estimated manufacturing overhead for the year is projected to be 200,000. Total estimated direct labor cost is 140,000, whereas total estimated direct labor hours to be worked are 10,000. So what is FedCorp's predetermined manufacturing overhead rate? Well, again, we're going to take the total estimated cost of 200,000, and this particular company uses direct labor hours. So we're going to divide that by the estimated direct labor hours that we anticipate working, which is 10,000. So that's going to leave us $20 per direct labor hour. Okay, so remember that $20 per direct labor hour is how we will be allocating our overhead. So in this particular example, let's say that the company worked 11,000 direct labor hours. Well, that means our applied overhead, what we would have applied to jobs, would be $220,000. The $20 times the actual hours worked. So in this case, their actual overhead came out to be 190,000. So that's after we got all of the bills in and we were able to add them all together. But we allocated, based on our um, predetermined manufacturing overhead rate, 220,000. This means we, we did something called over allocation. We allocated more overhead than we should have by $30,000. Now, the reason this creates a little bit of a problem, see in this case our manufacturing overhead allocated was greater than our actual manufacturing overhead. The reason it's a problem is because our jobs then had been overcosted. We put more cost in that, those products than we actually incurred. Now, if our jobs have been overcosted due to overallocation, then our cost of goods sold at actually was too high. So we need to decrease the cost of goods sold by the amount of the over allocation. Now the opposite can happen as well where we under allocate. So the manufacturing overhead allocated actually comes in at less than what was incurred. So we under costed our jobs which is equally as bad because now we thought our cost was less than it actually was. And if that's the case and we undercosted due to under allocation, so our cost of goods sold was ultimately too low. We have to increase the amount of cost of goods sold for the amount of under allocation. So these will require the appropriate journal entry here. So how do manufacturers treat non-manufacturing costs? Well, GAP says only inventoryable product costs are added to the cost of assets. Um, Costs incurred in other elements of the value chain, like our period costs, not our product costs, are not assigned to products for external financial reporting, but instead are treated as operating expenses. But if management wants to know the total cost of the product across the entire value chain, so for example, including things like human resources, legal services, accounting, um, then managers have to use the cost information to guide internal decisions such as setting long-run average prices. So ma ma managers can add these non-manufacturing costs to the inventoryable product costs to build the total cost of the product across the value chain. But keep in mind that these non-manufacturing costs are assigned to products only for internal decision making, never for external financial reporting because GAAP just doesn't allow it.